<laughs> we well for an half hour. <laughs> I am here um, this morning with the wonderful Marie Rippin. And um, as part of our On Our Knees series, we have been looking a lot at all sorts of different things. But one of the themes that keeps kind of cropping up when we talk about prayer is that space to hear from God. And we talk about it a lot as if it's the most natural thing in the world. And it, and it should be because we are his children and that's so what God wants. But actually, for so many of us, hearing from God might be really difficult. Maybe you've never done it. Maybe you see other people having words or prophetic pictures. And it's like, what is this hearing from God? So I have asked the wonderful um, Marie Rippin to join me this morning. And... Um, for two reasons. A, she has got the spiritual gift of prophecy um, that the scripture talks about. But more than that as well is she is a woman of wisdom. And um, I just think there is there is such a beauty to what Marie is going to bring this morning because she's going to bring a, a passion and enthusiasm for the prophetic, which is so good. But also she will bring so much wisdom and experience with that that just means you we're just in for a treat this morning. So, Marie, hello. <laughs> so we're going to start off. Um, could you just like, we talk about prophecy, prophetic, and some people might be like, what, what on earth is prophecy? It's like not really an everyday word we kind of come across. And um, what, what is prophecy? And maybe helpfully, like, what isn't it as well? So, so basically, there is so many interpretations scripturally and out there about what prophecy is. Um, but for me, I think it's as simple. It's as simple as prophecy is speaking out the heart of God. Mm -hmm. So it allows us, by the Holy Spirit, to hear His voice and then deliver the message of what what that voice is saying. So, in a in a nutshell, what it isn't is you can't prophesy without the Holy Spirit. Um, and so we get our source directly from the Holy Spirit from God. And if we're not prophesying without God, then we're not prophesying, basically. So, um, and you know, there's there's loads of kind of I've got so many notes here, but just it just talk, talks about when pre people prophesy, um, they can prophesy with some of their own self coming through, some of their own kind of agendas or flesh and all those kind of things. And it's it's really important that. Um, we're asking the Holy Spirit um, to actually kind of keep us on track and we're weighing and measuring and sifting. I think it's in Thessalonians it talks about sifting and weighing and measuring what people prophesy. Thessalonians 5 verse 21, judge it, sift it, eat what's good and spit out the bones um, because there can be a mix of God and the person's own kind of self from that. So it's learning how to judge that, learning and asking how the, the, asking the Holy Spirit um, what's for now, later, whether it's appropriate, all those things. Mm -hmm. So how do you, I think that's really helpful, this definition, by the way, of just like hearing the heart of God. So how, how do you see, like, I guess the church body, how can we all take steps to hear from God better? Is it, is prophecy something for everybody? Is it just for a few, like, special people? Like, how do we hear from God? Who hears from God? <laughs> So when I started looking at this, because I think when we understanding the, understand the gifts that God's given us, there are depths and levels of those gifts. So for some of us, prophecy comes more naturally than others. But it talks about in 1 Corinthians 12 about the list of spiritual gifts that are available um, to us when we have the Holy Spirit. So I believe everyone has the ability to prophesy, but not all people will choose to because it's the holy spirit that gives us revelation in the first place all believers can do it even if it's like a simple picture so how can i do it or how can you do it just by saying really um, or getting someone to say for you holy spirit this is a gift that you've given me i believe in faith that you've given me this gift so would you teach me how to do this would you start to give me the words or pictures or scriptures for the people around me because if it's for asking for the people that we know that's that's how we start um 
So scripture says prophesy is in proportion to your faith. Mm -hmm. So when you start, you've got a little bit of faith, which obviously can grow. And you have to build trust in the Holy Spirit that he'll speak to you and build trust in yourself so you can hear correctly from God. So, you know, it is prophecy. Mm -hmm. Does that help? Yeah, it makes me think of um, it, it makes me think of last year when we did Alpha and uh, the Holy Spirit Weekend. I don't even know if I've ever told you this. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit Weekend was coming up, and um, I was going to ask you and John to come and leave the Holy Spirit Weekend because I was like, oh, they're just much better at kind of facilitating and you know, kind of doing that sort of side of stuff. I felt God specifically challenged me that on that. I'm like, Rachel, no, you can do this. You need to just trust that I will show up. And it's that really scary moment on the Alpha Holy Spirit weekend where it's like you literally, you watch a video and then it's like, God, Holy Spirit, would you come and would you reveal yourself? And then, and then you wait and you just trust that God's going to turn up. And it's terrifying when you first do it, particularly with people that are on a journey of faith. But it's amazing because God always does. And it's, you're absolutely right. It's that just trust that God wants to speak to. Yeah. 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 So how, how have you kind of recognized, grown? Like how, how do you nurture and, and mature in the prophetic gift? So years and years and years ago, pre-children, so we're talking 20 plus years ago, we were in a really, really big um, Church of England um, church of about 500 strong. And we were invited to be a part of this tiny little group called Open to God, which is what it was about, really. Um, there were so much older, both in years and spiritual maturity folks there, wiser than us, um, you know, and people... Um, it was a safe place to make mistakes um, in that group. There was also accountability and they taught me some really good. I, I was talking to Rachel before we started this and some good golden rules of the prophetic, really. Just a couple of simple ones to, to start with, which is that it's really important that we prophesy from the foundation that God is good. Um, so we should always be in our in the words that we receive they should always build people up they should always be encouraging to people and they should inspire people as well and it's about this kind of prophesying to the measure of your faith thing again where for me as I've matured in that gifting my boundaries have kind of got wider my kind of not my rules but my kind of expectations so once you begin to prophesy then those kind of guidelines widen and change and mature. So some of my own ones now are about actually setting captives free by what I prophesy, what God gives me to prophesy, unlocking destinies in people, giving revelation mm -hmm. and sometimes interpretation. So they've changed mm -hmm. um, you know, as I've matured. But in a, in a kind of God is so good and he doesn't ever allow us if we're walking with him in a close way to get too big for our boots. So just on a, a, our Friday small group a couple of weeks ago, I had a picture of an, an orange in, in the group. Um, and it was kind of like, what are you giving me that for God? Oh no, what on earth does this mean? It's, it was quite a, an amusing, funny thing to be given. And I felt God gave me such a real deep revelation of it's time not to slice the orange and the skin off really cleanly and surgically. It's time to dig our fingers right into the kind of the orange to release that amazing aroma. You get that fragrance of God's Holy Spirit. It's time to dig our fingers in right in deep to who God is, peel it back get rid of all of that pith stuff and actually find the the real the real kind of goodness that's in inside that sweetness and to be be refreshed by his holy spirit and do you know what that spoke to every single person there every single person had an orange story it was amazing and it was kind of off that simple picture of an orange it was incredible watching people sharing from the bizarre to the kind of extreme about just what god had said about oranges so yeah it's funny, isn't it? when 
that God gives you pictures where sometimes you're like, surely that's not right. How is that going to connect? And yet it does just somehow unlock something. Could you give some other examples of um, prophetic words or pictures that God's given you where it's really, it's just released something and, and it's shifted something in someone's life or a whole people or community's life in, in a way that you just couldn't do unless God had directly kind of spoken? Um, well, sometimes I think give, God gives you really powerful prophetic visions or pictures. For me, that's that was another thing. It, it talks about in prophecy um, different ways of prophesying. So some people will dream dreams. Some people will have specific scriptures and interpretations of those. Some people will see pictures and have visions. And some people will have even angelic encounters and those kind of things. That's all, you know, under that realm of prophecy for myself i often have like visions um and kind of scenes kind of playing out so i sometimes not revisit but god will give me a powerful kind of vision and it, it will come back and back and back and be used and interpreted in different ways so one of my favorite ones that god uses quite frequently is of your of two hands and one hand is holding like a pile of sand and the other hand is holding rich deep earth and it's almost like god was is kind of saying in this the last time i received this picture which was just a couple of weeks ago again actually of the trying to hold sand if you've ever tried to hold sand in your hand is almost impossible and god was just talking about the richness of his earth to uh, to have our foundations deep deep down into his rich deep earth and when we put our foundations and our hopes into that deep rich earth then he can grow something from it because it's the right the right kind of environment for for things to grow so if you if you plant things in deep rich fertile earth you get new life mm -hmm. so that's something that i had used specifically for someone to pray to pray for them on internet in an individual basis because they were they were trying to hang on to some of the wrong stuff like that kind of sand mm -hmm. so that's that's kind of you know that's an individual an individual way and um, something else that i believe that god is saying that has been comes again and again and again to me is a stirring uh, it's almost like a, a, a picture of God stirring the heavens so it's like a, a heavenly stirring and I believe that that is a, um, something for now that even in these times it can be so um, easy to think that God has not abandoned us but he's not moving in these times because it's so tough but this picture is almost like a giant hand stirring the heavens and I believe it's a call to pray it's a call for prayer it's a call for to start actually walking closer to god in any way that you can whether that is through worship whether that's through prayer, prayer whether that's through scripture whether that's time spent with him to to see what he's saying to us and if we start praying on our knees and if we start actually humbling ourselves then we can expect to start hearing from god because as we pray and we do that then the heavens will start stirring and there is a massive untrapped army up there at our disposal the battle's been won but god can actually activate um you know his spirit so, so yeah Could you kind of of it? i know a big passion for you with the prophetic is the humility side and, yeah. and the patience would you just share a little bit about that as well okay so i i think that you always need to be prophesying in the in the background of family and community that you should always be in church um because there has been times in the past with john and myself where we've had some incredible people of god prophetic people and prophets who just haven't kept that really good balance of humility um and it's kind of verged into kind of kind of power and arrogance and then god just can't operate like that so it's being in a in a position where you are humble um mm. that you actually say thank you god i've received this from you but my job is just to give it and actually to leave it that it doesn't become about my agenda that god's given me this amazing revelation for say rachel but she's not doing anything with what i've given her it's it's actually having that being humble and saying thank you god now i've handed it over that's my job done um i mean there are also prophetic stuff that you need to keep praying into so god can give us amazing revelation 
akin to say I've prayed for John's work colleagues in the past and he's given me an amazing kind of a supernatural revelation of those people that in the natural we could never have received and it's broken something then through prayer of mm. praying for those people situations start to change in the natural because you've been given that revelation from God um but yeah I've had a similar experience of having something through dream actually I've only probably ever had two prophetic dreams um but again it was something that I couldn't actually share but it changed the way I pray because God had given me vision for it in the um, dream it's really good yeah, there's a responsibility in it. It's it's serious stuff, mm -hmm. actually, because although it can be incredibly exciting mm -hmm. to just have this kind of revelation from God, it comes with a with a price. You know, I I you know I've got to be in a, a good place with God. I've got to be. I can't prophesy if I'm not walking with God. If I'm not growing in that intimacy with Him. If I'm not giving Him regular time, like proper daily regular time to speak to me if i'm not praying if i'm not reading his word if i'm not worshiping so it, it, it doesn't just da, da, da happen it, yeah. it, you know it's and and you can go through really dry stages as well mm -hmm. um with the prophetic and it can be about then having to turn around and examine your own life and see where you're going, how you're walking, mm -hmm. um, and those kind of things. So good. It just, it's really good, just that idea of actually, it's the heart of God, isn't it? So how can we hear or get revelation of the heart of God if we're not intimately walking with him? And that also just that, I think what you said there around just the humility of it's a gift, and it's a gift to serve other people, isn't it? And so being able to humbly offer that and be able to step away from it, I think it takes real humility and grace and um, really good. I wonder if we could finish, Marie, with you praying and if you could pray specifically like, um, I guess, <laughs> as, as Catholic, as Lighthouse Church, to be people that take seriously the call that we are his followers and that we can hear from God and we can hear from God for other people, for situations and bring breakthrough and see more of the kingdom of God breaking out here on Anglesey as we see life change, as we see situations change. Um, would you be up for that? Just finishing up by praying for us and commissioning us into that. So maybe like if it's your first time ever hearing about prophecy, just really encourage you to kind of maybe put your hands out or something. To just receive this prayer wherever you're at, whether you've been a Christian for 20 odd years but you've always thought the prophetic's a bit weird, or maybe you've been a Christian a really long, long time and you love the prophetic, but it's just like getting that fresh commissioning and um, to serve God in that way. So go for it, Marie. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Father God, um, that you've given us the gift of prophecy. Father, just by saying, Holy Spirit, this is a gift that you've given me. I believe in faith that we can all um, prophesy. So, Father, would you just um, give that gift to our whole community, Father? Would you just teach us? Would you help us start? Give us the words or the pictures or the scriptures for the people around us. Father, would you just commission all these people, Father God, just to have a... Uh, a little bit of faith to actually start prophesying um, into their lives, into our friends' lives who don't know you, into our family, into our neighbours, into our work colleagues. Father, would you give us revelation? Would you speak to us? Mm -hmm. And Father, would you unlock something in that, Lord? Would you actually show us? Would you give us revelation so that we know how to pray for them, so that we know how to speak to them? So that we just have, we are armoured up and armed and ready, Father, for action. And we just want to thank you, Father, for this incredible, precious gift that you've given us. We thank you that we are worthy enough to hear from you. Father, just help us to teach and receive it with humility, Father, with grace. We just thank you that you are God and you give us your Holy Spirit to be able to do this. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, would you just release something across our community? Would you give us an expectation and excitement to hear from you in this way? So it becomes a natural and normal, a daily 
occurrence that we can be hearing, receiving from our Father God. And we just ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Brilliant. Marie, thank you so much for sharing this morning. No problem. Thank you, Rachel. My love.